Hey yeah, everybody, it's your bro, hope you're doing well, and in this video I'm going to show you one way in which we can create an adjacency matrix in computer science. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Alright people, so an adjacency matrix. An adjacency matrix is a 2D array to store ones and zeros to represent edges between nodes. There are different variations. You could use booleans, so you could say true or false, depending if there's an edge or not. And basically, the number of rows and columns in an adjacency matrix is equal to the number of unique nodes. The runtime complexity to check an edge is big O of 1, it's constant, and the space complexity is big O of V squared, so it uses up a lot of space. Now let's create our own adjacency matrix. They're actually fairly simple. So I'm going to create two classes, graph and node. So file, new, class, I will name this graph, finish, file, new, class, and I will name this class, node. So let's say that each node has some data, maybe a single character, char data, and I'll create a constructor. Node, we'll pass in some data when we create a node. Char data, this dot data equals data. Within the graph class, I'm going to declare a 2D array of integers. So integer 2D array, and I will name this matrix. And within the graph constructor, we will instantiate our matrix. Matrix equals new int. Now we need to declare a size of this matrix. When we construct a graph object, let's set up a parameter. So int size. Size will be the amount of nodes that we have. And the size of this 2D array will be size and size. That's why the space complexity is big O of V squared. It's the number of vertices squared. If we have five nodes, well then the size is going to be a total of 25 elements. Now let's declare a few methods. Public void add node. And then we will pass in a node. Node, node. And add edge. Public void add edge. Then we need two indices, a source and a destination. Int source, int destination, DST for short. We'll need a method to check an edge. Public, and this will return a Boolean value. Boolean check edge. And we'll need a source and a destination for parameters. And let's create a print method. Void print. Okay, we'll fill in add a node a little bit later. So let's fill in add edge. We will pass in a source and a destination, two indices. So source will be the row, destination will be the column. So what we're going to do is take our matrix at index of source and destination and set whatever value is in here, which will be zero, equal to one. That means there's an edge between two nodes. And that's really it. Within the check edge method, we're going to check within our matrix if a given value is equal to one. If it is, return true. If not, return false. So using an if statement, let's check to see if matrix at index of source and destination is equal to one. That means there's an edge. If there is an edge, let's return true. Else, we will return false. And that's it. Okay, now before we actually print our graph, let's actually create a graph. So let's get rid of this. Graph, graph equals new graph. And we can add some nodes, although this method doesn't do anything quite yet, but it will in the future. And we need to pass in a size, uh, so let's pass in five. We'll create five nodes. So to add a node, type graph.addNode, and this is a method that we created. And I will pass in an anonymous node, or you can use a named one. So we have new node, and then to create a node, we need to pass in some data because that's what we decided on. So let's pass in the letter A. So this will be node A, and we'll create a few more nodes. B, C, D, and E. And we also can add edges between these nodes to represent adjacency. So to add an edge, type graph.addEdge. So what we're doing in this example, think of each node as having an index number. To create an edge between two nodes, we will pass in the index number of each node. If I need an edge between nodes A and B, well, each of these has an index number within our matrix. 
So this first node would have an index of 0, and the second node would have an index of 1. If I need an edge between these two, I will add edge between 0 and 1. And let's create a few others. So how about b and c? So c would have an index of 2, and c will have two edges based on the previous video. So c will be connected to d, so 2 to 3, as well as e, so 2 and 4. D won't have any edges. This is a directed graph in this example. And E has two edges. We have E to A, that would be 4 to 0. And E to C, 4 and 2. Now let's print our graph. Graph dot print, and we need to fill in this method. Within the print method of the graph class, we just have to print our 2D array. And we can use for loops for that. So this will be the outer for loop, int i equals 0. We will continue this as long as i is less than the length of our matrix, matrix.length, then increments i by 1. So this will iterate over all of the rows in our matrix, and then we need a nested for loop. So change i to j within the nested loop. Whatever index we're on, we will take matrix at index of i dot length this time as the stopping condition. And during each iteration of the inner for loop, I will use a print statement. And I will print matrix at indices of i and j. Then I'll add a space between each of these. Oh, then when you exit the inner for loop, let's print a new line. OK, and here's our adjacency matrix. Each row corresponds to a node, as well as each column. If there's adjacency between two nodes, well, then there will be a 1 at that row and column. This next part really isn't necessary. This is kind of the general idea of an adjacency matrix, but let's add some headers to the rows and columns. Within the graph class at the top, let's create an array list. Array list, and the data type will be node, and I will name this nodes. When we construct a graph object, let's instantiate our nodes array list. Nodes equals new array list. And when we add a node, we just take our nodes array list dot add node. And within the print method, let's make a few changes. So preceding our nested for loops, let's print the data found within each node. So it serves as a header. And I can use a for each loop for this. For every node node in nodes, then let's print the nodes data then maybe I'll add a space. Oh, then add a new line. OK, there we go. Each column has the data found within each node. And let's also do the same thing with each of these rows. I think it would look cool. Before the inner for loop, let's do the same thing. Let's copy this line. But this would be nodes.getIndexOfI.data. And let's see how that looks so far. OK. Not too bad, but let's add a few spaces. So system.out.print, and I'll just print two spaces. All right, there's our adjacency matrix. If you're working with more complex data, let's say city names, I would consider using printf statements instead because you can align things properly. And if you do want to check an edge, we did create a check edge method. So within a print line statement, let's invoke the graph.checkEdge method and then pass in two indices. So let's see if there's an edge between nodes A and B. So A has an index of 0, B has an index of 1. There is an edge between these two, so this will return true. There is an edge. This time, let's check to see if there's an edge between D and C. So D has an index of 0, 1, 2, 3. And C has an index of 2. And this returns false. There is no edge. All right, people. So that's an adjacency matrix. It's an array to store ones and zeros to represent edges. The number of rows and number of columns is equal to the number of unique nodes. The runtime complexity to check an edge is big O of 1. All we need are two indices. However, the space complexity for an adjacency matrix is big O of V squared. Take the number of nodes you have and square it. So if I have five nodes, 5 squared is 25. We have 25 elements. All right, so that's an adjacency matrix. If you would like a copy of this code, I'll post this to the comment section down below. And well, yeah, that's an adjacency matrix in computer science.